you. I want to thank you for joining us on this Creating for Christ um, prayer series that Rhonda and I are doing. And I'm going to ask you to please ignore my voice. It's allergy season here in Tennessee. And so that means coughing and a sore throat and all those kind of things. And I don't know if you have that where you are, but um, it's not fun. I will, I will tell you that, but I feel certain that I will be on the mend soon. So last time I spoke with you, I talked about how Christ had to withdraw and chose to withdraw so that he could go and pray on his on his own, that he needed to spend that time with God, his Father. And, um, you know, prayer is one of those things that we just, we know it's so very, very important to do, and, and we know we need to do it. We know we can communicate with God when we do it. But I think it's one area of our Christian walk that for many of us, if we were to say, you know, is your prayer life where you wanted it? I think most of us would probably say no. You know, and, and I want to give you a little bit of a short that you are actually in some very, very good company. You know, if you look in scripture, you're going to see the disciples ask Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he goes on and he, he teaches them what we know is the Lord's prayer. And Rhonda's going to be speaking about that in a subsequent video. But just know this, even then, even when Christ was walking with the disciples, they were still God, you know, show us, show us how to pray, teach us how to pray, tell us how to pray. Now today we're going to be in John 15 and our verse is actually John 15 7 but I cannot just pull that verse out and say okay this is this is it we're just going to talk about this one verse because taken out of context this verse can be misused and has been misused again and again and again. Now let me read the verse to you so that you know what it is and then we're going to go back and we're kind of going to plug it into what is happening right now. So in John 15 7 Jesus is talking to the disciples and this is what he says. He says, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Now, in and of itself, we're going to grab that. Well, you can ask for anything you want and it'll be granted. And we're going to grab that and people have done that and run with it. And then when their prayer isn't granted, they're, wait, wait a minute. What, what is this about? You just said, I could ask for anything I want. My prayer would be granted. But I want to show you some really key components to that in order to kind of release the power of that. Now, to do that, we're going to go to the beginning of John 15. Jesus is talking to the disciples in the upper room. And if you remember our last series, um, I spoke, in fact, I ended, I think, on in John 17, where Christ was praying. It was his last prayer. He was praying for the disciples. And, and in his very last moments before he was captured, he... Um, he also was praying for us. And I still just love that. I just love knowing that I was on Jesus's mind before the Roman soldiers came and took him. But John 15 is leading up to that. And he's talking to the disciples. And you can imagine that they are very concerned with what's getting ready to happen. Because in John 14, we hear some of them say, Jesus, we don't even know where you're going. What are you talking about? We don't know what you're getting ready to, to do. And so Christ is talking to them. And in John chapter 15, he, he's almost saying to them, okay, guys, look, um, y'all know what it was like with me. Now let's talk a little bit about what it's going to be like without me. So John chapter 15, verse 1, I want to read a little bit of it for you. It says, I, and this is Christ talking, I am the grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. So remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Now, I'm reading this from the New Living Translation, but you might have a translation that has a word that says abide. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. Now, that abide word in the Greek is, is meno, M-E-N-O. And what it means is to stay closely connected, to, um, to not be separated, to, to join together and... I love that word abide because it, it's it's so powerful. Can you imagine being joined together with Christ to stay connected with Christ? That's what he's saying here. He's, you know, don't leave. Let's have unbroken fellowship. That's what abide is. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of um, 
the the word of the year thing, you know, where maybe like toward the end of a year, like maybe toward the end of 2015, you'll pick a word that's going to be your 2016 word. And um, I, I did that last year. So at the end of 2014, my word actually, and it wasn't one that I really chose. It was one that, that I think God just led me to. And the word was abide, just abide, abide. Because I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to kind of run out ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to run on and I'm going to get an idea and I'm going to be, God, this is going to be a great idea for you and it's going to bring you glory and I'm going to go and do this. And um, sometimes I run on ahead and I look behind me and I'm like, hey, hey, uh, are you coming? You know, God, are you coming? And so I think God knew that I needed that word abide because what I found myself doing is I've tried to run out ahead over the course of this year is gently being pulled back to him saying, hey, Julie, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me. Now, abide is a big word, and it's an important word because if you look in the Gospel of John, the word abide, just in John 15, is used 11 times, 11 times. So if Jesus is saying in one chapter, abide in me, remain in me, remain in me, remain in me, there's something of significance there. There's something of significance there. So when you look at John 15, the first four chapters that I read you, what he's saying is this, remain in me and I will remain in you. Now, I like the illustration that he's using of, of, of himself being the vine and us being the branch because the disciples were very familiar with this. There were um, vineyards all throughout some of the areas that they traveled, so they understood the importance of the vine. And what Christ is saying here is this. He's saying, I'm the vine, you're the branch, and you can't be fruitful without me. Now, let me try and give you an illustration that maybe will... Um, help you understand this just a little bit better. You know, I want you to think of a tree. I don't know what part of the country you're in, but, um, you know, here in Tennessee, we've got apple trees and, and, and peach trees and several other things, but let's go with an apple tree. So I want you to think about the apple tree. Now, as the, the apple tree blooms and as fall comes and the apples start to grow, you know, we go out, we pick the apples and, and go to the apple orchard and, and, the cooks among you make apple jelly and apple pie and apple crisp and all these things. And the non-cooks among you, like me, go to your home and eat these things that you've made. But but anyway, I, you need to visualize this tree because I want you to think about the branch that the apple comes from. The apple is a product of the branch. The apple cannot will itself into being. The apple cannot say, you know what, I'm going to make myself an apple. The apple comes from the branch, the branch is attached to the tree. So all those nutrients, everything that is needed to make that apple is interconnected. The roots of the tree lead up to the tree, the branch of the tree, all of which works together to make the apple. They have to work together or else there won't be an apple. You can have an apple tree, but if something is broken from that, there won't be an apple. It won't appear. And in fact, if you were to cut that branch off the apple tree and throw it to the side, for a little bit, that branch might do what it was supposed to do. For a little while, that branch might kind of flower and it might look like it's going to produce an apple, but eventually it's going to die because it's not a attached to its source of, of nutrient. It's not attached to the thing that makes it grow. That's what Christ is saying here. He's saying, look, y'all, I'm the vine. You're the branch. Now, we got to stay interconnected together. We have to abide together because if you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you stay connected to me, what's going to come out of you is going to be fruit from me. It's going to be things that I'm going to produce through you. You're not going to be able to do it on your own. If you try, you won't be able to because you need me. You need my strength. You need my power. You need me to produce that that I want to produce for, through you. You need me for the fruit. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Now, verse 5 in chapter 15 goes on. It says this, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, so here we are again with this remain, or your version might say abide. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. So can we just agree that Christ is making the point? It is very, very, not just important, it is critical. When I am not here, you have to remain in me and I will remain in you. It has to happen. We can agree on that, right? Based on what he's saying here. 
Now, in verse um, 7, something gets ready to change, though, and this is what it says. It says this, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Now that's where we are. So here's what Jesus is doing. He's piggybacking on this whole thought of, hey, we got to remain together. You have to remain in me. I'll remain in you. And what he's talking about there is faith. You have the faith in me. You have the faith in me and your faith is going to gonna cause me to remain in you. So the first part, you remain in me and I remain in you, that's about faith. But in verse seven, when he says, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, what he's saying now is this, hey, y'all, remember what I've taught you. Remember the promise is that I gave you. Remember the things that you've learned through me. Remember my words. Keep them in you. So this verse 7 is an if-then kind of proposition. The first part is this. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, meaning this, if you continue to have faith in me, if you continue to believe that I'm the Messiah, continue to hold on to your faith and take the words that I've taught you, take the things that I've taught you, keep them instilled in you. So believe and have faith and then use the words to direct you, to direct your actions, to direct your thoughts, to direct how you live. Here comes the then. You may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Now, you need to see how this if-then works together. The if, if you remain in me, if you have faith and my words remain in you, if you follow my teachings, the things that I taught you, then you can ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Now, he's not saying, if you do all this perfectly, if you're a perfect Christian, then you get the privilege of coming and asking for anything you want and I'm gonna give it. What he's saying is this. He's saying, you know what? If you have faith in me and you're living according to what I taught you, the things that you ask are gonna be the things that are according to my will. And if those things are according to my will, then of course I'm going to say yes to them. Of course I'm going to going to um going to answer them in such a way that will cause you to be fruitful, to bear fruit, which is what he's talked about in the whole entire chapter so far. So here's the thing. And this is where we get hung up a little bit, I think. If you ask for these things, if you ask for anything you want and it will be granted, if you're understanding that, that you will be asking for things that are in his will because you're in such connection with him because you're remaining in him and his words are remaining in you, and if you ask for those things, it'll be granted because it's his will, this is when you have to trust if he says no, right? Because he's going to say no sometimes. I remember when I was going through my infertility battles and I was just so mad at God, so mad. And I was talking to a pastor and I said, why isn't he answering me? Why isn't he answering my prayer? And the pastor said, Julie, he is. God is always going to answer prayer. He's going to answer it in, in, in three ways, one of three ways. He's going to say yes, he's going to say no, or he's going to say not now. And so... For me, when I was praying so hard, when Mark was praying so hard for God to give us a child, his answer continued to be, not now, not now, not now. And that not now eventually became a yes that gave us Matt. But I had to be okay with the fact that, you know what? John 15, 7 doesn't mean that I can ask and you're going to say yes every time. And we're kind of like a good, um, you know, you're kind of like a great credit card up there. I ask and I get it. I ask and I get it. John 15, 7 is saying this. Julie, you have faith in me and you remember the things that I taught you. And then when you ask, when you ask, it will be granted. So I have to trust in his timing. I have to trust in his promises. I have to trust in his love. Do you remember in the other video series that Rhonda and I did, we, we talked about um, a verse that says we put our trust in his love. This is a great example of, of this. We put our trust in the fact that he loves us so much that He's going to give us the things that, that we need, the things that further his kingdom, the things that cause us to bear fruit. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Guys, understand this. Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much. Remain in that. Remain in that faith. Continue to study. Continue to study his words. Live those things out and you will ask for things. You will ask for things that are in accordance with what he wants for you because you will be in such harmony with him and that will be granted. I look forward to seeing you next week. This is a tricky verse. It's a tricky verse, but I, I um, let's just pray. God, thank you so much for, for, 
for showing up today. Lord, I ask that your words just hit each woman and each man in their heart, Lord. I ask that you give us the understanding, Lord, to know that um, that we, we need to remain in you and your words need to remain in us, Lord. And I ask it that, that we understand that because it's, it's just how much you love us. Lord, we love you back. In your name I pray, amen. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.